From KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NoCo, a daily slice of Northern Colorado news and happenings. It's Friday, December 1st. I'm Erin O'Toole. The sugar beet industry began in Colorado right around 1900. Today, it's only a small part of the state's economy, but through the early part of the 20th century, beets were the most significant agricultural product grown here. They were so important to the economy that people referred to sugar beets as white gold. During this time, thousands of Hispanic and Mexican people came to northern Colorado to work in the beet fields. Many of them eventually settled in Fort Collins, predominantly in what would come to be called the Tres Colonias, three neighborhoods that surrounded the Great Western Sugar Company. Betty Aragon Matotis is something of an expert on the legacy of the families who settled in this area. She's been a longtime community leader advocating for Hispanic and Latino communities and co-founded a cultural center spotlighting the Tres Colonias neighborhoods. I sat down with her to learn more about this fascinating and enduring piece of Northern Colorado history. Betty, I'm excited to finally get the chance to talk to you. Welcome to In the NoCo. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. I want to talk about the indelible contributions of the Hispanic and Latino communities on Northern Colorado really over the last hundred years. And to do that, we kind of need to start with the sugar beet. Even though it's not really visible anymore here, the sugar beet industry was a very powerful part of the economy. Right. The sugar beet, it was an empire. A lot of the factories were in Fort Collins, Loveland, Greeley um, in 1901. They made $3.1 million in production. That's why they call it white gold, because the sugar beet industry, it made Fort Collins flourish. And so, of course, the sugar beet industry needed a lot of labor. The amount of labor needed was so massive that Great Western set up an office in the El Paso Juarez and started recruiting Mexican nationals. And so at that time, the revolution was going on in Mexico. So between 1900, 1930, we had 1 million that came into the U.S. 50,000 of those came into Northeast Colorado. And you co-founded the Museo de las Tres Colonias to call attention to this aspect of Fort Collins and Northern Colorado's culture and history. And you've led efforts to honor and acknowledge the really backbreaking work that these sugar beet workers endured. And I, it, it sounds like this was just such a sacrifice. It was a sacrifice. You know, a lot of people, especially the Hispanics, had to work with the short hoe. And because they worked with that short hoe, they were doing the stoop labor. So that meant that they were bent over or they were on their hands and knees and using that short hoe. It was great for the farmers, the owners, loved it because supposedly it did a better job, but it was at the price of people and damaging their backs. One of the things that really made me so angry when I kept thinking about it was children. Children don't belong in the fields. Of course, then they didn't have any child labor laws and they were in the fields with their families. But because the stoop labor was so bad on the backs, their spines didn't grow correctly. So they had problems with growing, right? And of course, the damage that it did to so many people's backs that still complain today. Well, you have led a lot of efforts to honor and acknowledge this work. And that is symbolized, among other things, with a monument that's in Sugar Beet yes. Park in Fort Collins. I'm wondering what what do you hope people today will understand about what life was like back then for these workers? Being able to do the monument, I felt like it was really necessary in order to continue to educate the community, but to take away the stigma that was related to people that were working in the sugar beet industry, there was a certain amount of shame. Hmm. People looked down on you because you were working in the beet fields, right? But you were providing a tremendous amount of service for not a whole lot of money. You know, I can't even express the feelings when we did that monument and I saw so many tears flow that day. You know, it was just... It came full circle, you know, for honoring forgotten people. 
and their contributions and that they contribute today. You're so right, because I think we look upon this area today, Northern Colorado, Fort Collins, Greeley, and we think, you know, it's thriving. And this is really because of the contributions that were made decades ago. Con and, and they continue. I mean, there's still people working in the fields in, I passed through Greeley not too long ago and saw all the potato that was being picked, <sighs> right? And what I want to continue to advocate for is making sure that they're getting paid a decent, honest wage today, working conditions that are really humanistic, because I still hear that conditions still aren't what they need to be. Could you talk about how your work has changed over the years? What, what you were heavily focused on 20 years ago versus now, has that changed? Um, you know what? Not really. I've gone to city council so many times in the past fighting about um, affordable housing and making sure that people that work here can live here. And I'm working on my new project, honoring baseball. Because back in the day, Mexicans and Hispanics that were working in the beet fields, they couldn't play with the white players because of the discrimination. Mm -hmm. So they started their own leagues. So now I want to work on getting some kind of recognition at City Park. Uh, that's where a lot of the Hispanics played, whether it's a statue or some kind of recognition to honor the baseball players, because that was huge back in the day of the Beatworks. This is how they did their playtime. I want to talk about your um, nonprofit, Mujeres de Colores, yep. and tell me about the Christmas program, because I believe that is something that's coming up right away. <laughs> Yes, it's actually, we're going to be doing it on December the 16th at the Streets facility. And we are in the midst of fundraising. We're trying to fill a need for coats, gloves, hats, and then toys. We had over 200 kids come through last year. People were lined up at six in the morning. You know, we don't open till 12. And they said, yeah, but you know, we, we need to make sure that our children get something for Christmas. So, you know, for me, I think that people need to understand the need is so great. And I am just really working so hard to make sure that at the end of the day, every child has gotten a new coat, hat, mittens, and definitely a new toy. Betty, thank you so much for the work that you do in the community. And thank you for joining me today to talk about it. Erin, thank you so much for the opportunity. I just feel really blessed to have this connection. To learn more about Betty Aragon Matotas, the Tres Colonias neighborhoods, and the work of Mujeres de Colores, you'll find links in our show notes and at KUNC.org. Our theme music was composed by Colorado artist Robbie Reverb. We got production assistance today from Mickey Capper. Robin Vincent is our executive producer. I'm your host, Erin O'Toole. We'll be back with you on Tuesday with more of what's happening in Northern Colorado. See you then.